culture. It's a Jesus culture. It's a culture where we start behaving like Jesus. Yes. And what Jesus did, it's beautiful. He spent a whole lot of time being grabbed out because he called the Zacchaeuses down from the tree. And he went home with them. And the religious crowd said, why is he at home with that tax collecting sinner? Doesn't he know he's a robber? A thief? But what they didn't know, the religious crowd, Zacchaeus, was repenting. They were too busy complaining to rejoice in the repenting. The culture opposite of Jesus' culture is the complaining culture. Look, I, I'm human. It it's real easy for me to find something to complain about. Amen. Ouch. But it's a little bit more difficult out of my human nature to step out and step in the supernatural nature of Jesus and be like Jesus and quit finding stuff to complain about and find a plow to put my hands on and say, let's do something about what drives me crazy. Yeah. Oh. What you hate the most and what you love the most, somewhere in between there is what you've been called to. Get after it. A Jesus culture is behaving like Jesus. He went home with Zacchaeus, but then also you can find him along with the twelve. The twelve who? Disciples. The followers of Christ. So he would get them saved, but then he would also disciple them. What would he do with his disciples? He would teach them. He would model for them. He would let them catch and pray it. And then they would give them model for our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Watch this. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. What are we doing? Jesus culture says the kingdom of God must come to her. We must build his kingdom now. Yes, we're looking for the rapture, but we're not going to lay down and sleep until the rapture gets here. We're going to put our days on heaven and say, come but until you come, let's tell the field and win the law and disciple the people. We've got a work to do. Get your hands dirty. Got a work to do. Come on, boy. Come on, boy.
Be holy. Why? I'm in awe of him. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to hurt him. Anybody don't just don't want to hurt him? That's right. That's right. I mean, I just love him too much. I don't want to hurt him. Anybody feel that way? Amen. About ten of them. I know it's after twelve. I don't want to hurt him, so I don't want to sin. But if I make a mistake, I'm not going to. The devil beat me up and say, you know, you just got to take your hands off the plow and quit that preaching stuff and that, that pastoring stuff and that stuff God's called you to. Nope. You know what I do? Fall on my face. And I say, Jesus, right. be watching. Right. What is true repentance? Repentance is I purpose in my heart to not go back to that same sin. And so I have a change of mind. I change my mind about what happened. And I turn and I go in the opposite direction. Right. So I walk away from that sin and I turn my back on it and I plan in my heart to not do it again. And so Jesus forgives me and I have a place on the plow. You have a place on the plow. Your place is different than mine, but we all have a place. It doesn't have to be complicated. Start somewhere. Where do I start? Get involved in something that's going on. Yes. I don't know what's going on. Yes. Well, talk to me after service. Yes. One of the other pastors. Some of the other workers. Talk to us. We'll put you to work. But some of you have visions and dreams of ministry that we haven't started yet. And you've been intimidated and held him back. And you're robbing us. You're robbing this church. And you're robbing the kingdom. Share your idea. Get after it. Because in Jesus' culture, encourages people to give it a shot. Try it. Now, if it's against Scripture, I'm going to tell you, No. <laughs> But if it's not against the Word, I'm going to tell you, do it and raise your own money. God bless you. <laughs> Jesus culture. Can I, I just put this down? Okay. So let me just... One last verse, okay? Well, it's two verses from one last chapter. Romans 12, 1 and 2. So how do believers... Become a part. So God wants me to be a part. And then last of all, God wants me to do my part. Being a part is an attitude. It's a disposition. It's an outlook. It says, I'm coming to do more than just sit on the pew. I'm looking for a place. And I'm even looking for a place so much that I will take a step out of my, if I'm a little bit uh, quiet, or whatever, I will step out of my comfort zone and I will ask somebody who even looks halfway like they know what they're doing or halfway like going on, how can I help? Benjamin is just over there preaching. Yes, he is. <laughs> Why are you going to class? You just got to ask somebody. I don't know what to do. I don't know where I belong. Well, talk to somebody. Just find somebody that halfway looks like they know what you're doing. So what has to happen for that to happen? Mine's got to change. Romans 12, 1 and 2, here it is. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all He has done for you. Why should I give my body and everything else to God? Because all He has done for me. You know what fear does? You run, fear will chase you down. Fear will keep you trapped from remembering what God has done. But sometimes, watch this, when I'm in the midst of the battle, I have to push myself towards faith by looking back and remembering what God has done. And what some of you need to do when anxiety and fear try to take hold of you and trap you and keep you back from your calling, you literally need to step, sit down with Bible in hand, pencil and paper, and begin to write down in the areas that the enemy is finding you everything in the past God has done for you or for others in that area that you can remember. And before you know it, as you push yourself toward faith, your list will become really long and faith will start stirring your heart. And you'll begin to say to yourself, you know what? This isn't as bad as I thought it was. Amen. Where's that plow at? Where's those girls that need a mothering figure at? Where's that tin at that's put up this spring toward Albion and Painwood? Yeah. Why are we going there? You know why we're going there? Some of, some, I heard some people ask, why are we going up and first of all, the tent's been donated. Secondly, uh, the person leading the ministry had somebody within this body on their own, not coerce, a couple come up to her and say, you know what, we have these rings and we feel led to give them to you. 
Guess what? The rings are worth three thousand dollars plus. That's a Jesus culture. Amen. November to Africa. I know I'm, I'm out of time. Can I just tell you this? We're flying back from Africa in November. We just had the most incredible mission trip I ever had. It's good to see our, one of our couples back from Haiti who's been on a mission trip. And we have one of our men, John Sorrow, is about to go to Haiti. You guys just miss each other. Go and do missions work. It's a Jesus culture. Amen. Go. Go to Mexico. Go wherever God's calling you. Anyway, so we're flying back and, and we, we dealt with that culture. We dealt with one of their one of their deepest sins is to worship their ancestors. We need to come and talk about this. Literally what they are doing is carrying on a seance. They are just calling evil spirits. But they think they're communicating with the dead. We know this is not scriptural. It is demonic. And so as we're going to these crusades, we're um, <coughs> confronting the demonic Men and women are manifesting demons. We're having to cast them out, as the Scripture tells us, in the, that Jesus did, because what? We're supposed to resemble Him, right? right? But as we're flying back, and I was thinking about all that God did, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the people that were healed, it was the most incredible, just mind-boggling. Those of you that are going in July, get ready. You're never going to be the same. And those of you that are supposed to go, don't let the enemy talk you out of it. And if you're not supposed to go on this trip, it may be another one. Don't go if you're not supposed to go. But if you're supposed to go, don't let the enemy beat you out. <coughs> anyway, that's for another sermon. So we're flying back, and I just hear the Lord whisper, you know, you confronted that culture, what about your own culture? And then He began to talk to me of all places. You know where we're at, we're at Four Mile Hill, but we're just at the neighbor, at the brink of Albion and Painburg. He began to talk to me about Painburg. I think he just serves in the end. He still wants us. But he says, Ronnie, Painburg is infested with drugs. Amen. And the thing is, in your heart, you already know it. I'm calling you and your body that I've placed you in charge of to attack it. And just like ancestor worship you just did in Swaziland, Africa, I want you to go after it in Painburg, Arkansas, the meth labs and the drug addicts and see them set free and the meth labs yes. shut down. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just, I mean, I just get back, I just get back from Africa, God speaking to me on this plane, I don't have any idea about a tent or anything, and then all of a sudden I just start, and I promise you, I mentioned a few names today, I promise you we're all on the same level. There are no heroes, there are no superstars. Yes. I'm, there's no big eyes that we use. That's the Jesus culture. Jesus made everybody feel equal. The woman at his feet, wiping with her tears, wiping with her hair, the tears, and others are putting her down. And Jesus says, Leave her alone. This is beautiful. And she had been, she had been a harlot. And yet he let her use her hair to wipe his feet. That's, that's yeah. Jesus culture. Yeah. So there's no big eyes to use here, but I mean, the Lord pinpointed Sharon used to me, and, and I didn't know, I didn't realize, I knew some of Sharon's story, but in many years ago, the enemy actually stole her marriage at the time and family through the drug culture of pain. Yes. And so, why would it be a coincidence that God would call her to lead the charge? And whatever's going to happen with the tent at Painburg to give the devil a big black eye. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of workers, a lot of prayers. Come on, somebody. It's going to take more than one person. Is God calling you? 
Get ready to get revived in the spring. Last verse, verse 2. So don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. I'm going to spell too. But let God transform. Everybody say transform. Transform. You into a new person by changing the way you think. Is, is it up there? Yeah. <laughs> you got to give it the problem. <laughs> by changing, I'm teasing, by changing the way you think. Yeah. How am I transformed? By changing the way you think. How, yeah. how does God change the way I think? He takes the washed rag, and what that is? His Word. Right. Yeah. And then He wets it down. God wouldn't use a dry rag. He wets it down. What is that? The Holy Spirit. He wets the rag with, a, with His presence, with His Spirit. Let her kill, Spirit makes it alive. This is the wash rag, His Word. And He wipes my mind down. Cleans it all up. You're a pauper. Cleans that up. No, you're a prince. He tells me. You're a princess. Princess. <laughs> you're something good. <laughs> Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn what? To know God's perfect will for you with a good and please, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Right. Woo, it feels good to be in that thing that is good and pleasing and perfect. Amen. What is that thing? God's will. What is His will? Put your hands on the plow and get after it. Stand up. Stand with me.